In some cases, clients receive engineered truss drawings and want to model them in Vertex BD only to send them to manufacturing without having to recreate all the roof slopes and the entire truss layout. I'm going to run through how you can model individual truss members, create the connections, define the assembly as a panel, then export the truss members to a roll former. I've already used the reference drawing functions to reference in a truss drawing from a DWG file and scaled it to full scale. The next step is to use the profile functions to trace over the truss drawing. So on the modeling tab, I'll go to profile and select the appropriate profile size. So in this case, it's going to be S sections of 350 S 162 43. And click OK. And I'm going to click my the start point that I want to use for the bottom cord. And you also want to pay attention to what you're using as your um, reference point. And right now I have that bottom right corner. Um, also, the orientation is correct. But if you need to rotate the profile, you can use the left and right arrow keys on your keyboard to rotate it 90 degrees at a time. I'm going to use the bottom center of the bottom cord, so I just need to find out which button I need to press in our little locating point menu on the side here. And because I have the profile rotated 90 degrees, it's the, uh, the center point on the left. And now I'm going to constrain myself in the horizontal direction, so I'll hit U on the keyboard, and then snap to the other end of my bottom cord. I'll do the same thing for the top cord. I'm going to go from the other direction so that my orientation stays in the correct direction. Otherwise, if you go from the other direction, you just have to rotate it around 180 degrees. And do the same for the webs on either end. And the diagonals. So again you can rotate the profiles using the arrow keys if needed. See if I can get that snap point there. And when we create the connections it's gonna trim up those ends a little bit so we don't have to worry about getting it exactly at the right position as long as we get the right angle. So now I have my truss members in place, and I can switch to the 3D model, see what it looks like here. So the next step is to create the connections. And depending on the situation, we can choose from a number of different types of connections. So under the joint menu, we have connection details. That'll open up our connection browser. And then under light gauge steel, we have C to C. So in this case, I'm using um, stud to stud framing. So that these are the types of connections I want to use. And I'll start with this uh, swage joint. So wherever I have my diagonals running into my top and bottom cords, I can use this one. So first, I'm going to select the bottom track. And now, keeping an eye on that prompt in the bottom left, I'm going to select the ends of the profile that we're going to be connecting to the bottom track and then hit confirm. And then I'm just going to click OK and accept all the defaults on our joint uh, properties form. And repeat for the top cord. And then I'm going to find the appropriate corner connections. So back to the connection detail browser and I'll use this swaged corner joint. So I'll select the end of this track, confirm, the end of this member, confirm, click OK, and then just repeat for all four corners. Oops, I did that one backwards. I'm just going to repeat. This is going to be the track, and then that's the piece. 
So I'll delete the old connection, and there we go. That's the way it should have been. And then last one. Okay, so now I have my truss parts and connections. I'll save my project. Go back to plan view. And the next thing I'm going to do is define this as a panel. Um, that's a necessary step before we can send these parts over to the roll former. Um, it also allows us to, to create the, the drawing, the panel drawing. Uh, so what we're going to do is select all the profiles. And you can use the selection filter if you want to just filter on profiles. And then hit Control A. That will select all the profiles. And now up at the top, under the Build Beams menu, I'm going to use Frame Line. So these are different types of uh, assemblies that we can define here. Frame Line works out nicely because then we can generate the drawing in the correct orientation since we're drawing it flat on the layout. So now I'm going to select the start and end point of the view and the location of the panel label. Now I can select the panel label. Oh, I have to go back up to the selection filter and hit all. Now I can select the panel label and create the drawing. So in this case, I'm going to use the beam assembly front view. And now I have the drawing. I can close that. Save the project again. And now I can go to Output and see Output and select the appropriate output for your roll former. I'll run Howick. And here we have the panel that we just generated. Click Write Output. And that creates the output file into the uh, Howick folder, in this case, inside the project. When done, click Quit. And you can right click on the project name in the project document browser and click Open Project Folder to open the File Explorer where you can go then navigate and find your output files. And that's all there is to it.